Hey, yo, what's up, y'all? It's Keith Shockley. Uh, I guess they won't call it legendary producer, Bomb Squad, uh, Public Enemy, you know, all the other stuff, good jazz. and <laughs> What is good jazz? <laughs> uh, now, man, you know, I'm just here doing my thing. We, we, we were behind the scenes talking, but he had brought up something that I had to get. So you was in the L.A. premiere oh, of Straight Outta Compton. Straight Outta Compton. Break it down. Break it down. <laughs> everybody in the hood was there, and everybody in their mama was there. It was um, um, my, my other partner. It, they held it at the um, Nokia Theater. I thought it was going to be at the, the Grauman's Chinese, Chinese Theater. Theater. I thought it was going to be there. No. They held it at the Nokia Theater. Pack. They let in the locals and the stars. And it was... It was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. It was like to go and see that man and to see Cube and train him up there like that and to tell that story, which was incredible. And then, and, and, a, and it's a surreal part for me because you know you see the scene where they come to Green Street, those guys are supposed to be me and Hank behind the desk, you know, behind the, behind the mixing board. <laughs> but it was actually, that scene was longer. Yeah. But when I was talking to Gary Gray, he said, yo, Keith, we had to cut it down because they was killing us for time and we had to edit out certain things. So they could really make a two hour, they two and make hour it, movie yeah. and it would still been and real. It still it, been, but not it, enough. The timeline would have not yeah. enough. But, but the timeline yeah. would have been a little more. But it would have been a little more, you know. Um, so that scene where when he come left, when he was having his issues with his money, you know, because like a lot of stuff that I saw in the movies, I didn't know what was really happening. Because like I said, we, I'm in the studios, we working, you know, I ain't paying attention. Mm -hmm. Q, no, I knew Q was like, yo, Easy ain't paying me. I came out here to do my own album. But I didn't know he didn't get paid off this album after it blew up. I didn't know that, you know, because we was on to the next thing. And then, you know, it, by within time, we sort of, and we drifted apart and stuff like that. They started doing his own thing, started doing his movies and all that other stuff. Um, <clears throat> then I seen him at, you know, the Hip Hop Honors. And, and I tell you something that was crazy about the Hip Hop Honors. You know, the first four years, every record in there we was in. Slick Rick, the Ice Cube, the Us, the, um, the LL1. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, who else? Um, I yeah, first four years we always yeah, always, we always had something to do with everybody's from success from that time. From that time, so it's like it's me. you know we we touched a lot of stuff, so it's kind of it's kind of cool, you know. So can, real quick, can you tell the last? I understand. I don't want to go too long. You talked to Q, yeah, and like you said, how did when you spoke to Q, you kind of said like, did you did he expect like how can you break it down? Like, well, well, it's like it it, it was. It was expected to do well. It wasn't expected to just crush everybody. But from what I felt from the vibe at the premiere, I you knew that it was going to crush everybody from the premiere. Yeah. So, because the premiere was. It was something, and when you saw it on the screen, it was something in Hollywood that, I made a comment on Facebook, that wasn't a comedy or about slavery, of black people making a movie over the last few years that was going big. You know what I'm saying? That was something that had to do with, quote unquote, modern day life in the hood. You know, it didn't make, you know, it, we wasn't running from white man and, you know, we wasn't cracking jokes and it was real. It, it was something that needed to be seen that, has, that wasn't seen in a minute, but it's seen in a different light from a music standpoint. Not a brother in the hood, I'm selling, selling crack on the corner and I'm coming up out the streets. Nah. This was freedom of expression of your art, you know, which was music, yeah, that, that changed, change, that had a change on the world. And that was, that was what I felt good about, you know. 
um, 